What's not subjective is Uh-oh. that teams did make picks in the NFL draft. They did. And quarterbacks ended up places. Caleb Williams is in Chicago. Jaden Daniels is in Washington. Bad. Drake May is in New England. Bad. Michael Penix is in Atlanta, et cetera, oh, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, and so these quarterbacks found landing spots. But what's interesting now is when you look back afterwards, how things could have gone differently if a couple of moves had been made. According to Mike Reese of ESPN, the Giants and Vikings both made offers to the Patriots to acquire the third pick. The Giants apparently offered the number six pick in the draft and their first round pick next year. The Patriots passed. The Vikings offered numbers 11 and 23 in this year's draft and their first next year for number three and two mid round picks and the Patriots passed. So it tells me that the Patriots were really in on Drake May. Otherwise, the Giants would have made a lot of sense. You would have gotten a, an extra first-round pick in return. And it also tells me, just from the Giants' side of things, that this whole, yeah, we believe in Daniel Jones, he's going to be our guy, so on and so forth, they were really trying to get up there because my guess would be they wanted Drake May. That was the guy they were targeting. And so Daniel Jones feels like it's dead man walking going into New York this year and what looks to be his final year with the Giants. So it's kind of interesting to see how things could have gone differently had New England decided, all right, maybe we're not sold on the quarterback class. Maybe we're not sold in getting a quarterback here. We could go ahead and move back and compile some picks and acquire some picks. And now the Giants go into this next season. As much as Joe Shane wants to say it and everybody wants to be, you know, all supportive of Daniel Jones, feels like, uh, you know, there's potential that uh, Daniel Jones maybe isn't the guy when the season is. By the time we get to the end of the season, he couldn't be the guy in New York. There's the Why are you focusing on <clears throat> just Daniel Jones? Well, there's J.J. McCarthy's team who drafted him tried to move up, and they weren't moving up to take him. It didn't seem okay. And that's that was my next question. Why do you think the Vikings? Because the way it's been presented, they love J.J. McCarthy. Love J.J. McCarthy. He wanted to go there. It was a perfect match. It was he outside of Caleb Williams. Was J.J. McCarthy their number one target, or do you think they would have gone up and gotten Drake May? I think that's who they're going up to get. They only moved up one spot to get J.J. I think what's more interesting about this is it points to the fact that each of these teams associated Drake May with a greater value than J.J. McCarthy. Because hmm. the Giants could have taken McCarthy, didn't. They take neighbors. Now they're stuck with Daniel Jones for another year. And in the case of the Vikings, they liked him enough to draft him but only move up one spot to make sure they would get him before someone else potentially leapfrogged him after the Atlanta Falcons – surprisingly picked Michael Penix. There you go. That that's what it was. That to to get JJ McCarthy was a reactionary piece to the fact that it's like, whoa, like what just happened here? Like right. we can't take any chances. So I mean, I don't know how they're gonna make JJ McCarthy feel about the whole thing based off of what you just asked. Uh Jonas, I mean I it I'm pretty sure it was Drake May or Jaden Daniels that they were anticipating they were going to get a hold of. But J.J. McCarthy was considered to be the last one outside of Bo Nix, which, again, when I, when I was talking to Jay, it sounded as though, you know, Sean Payton was sold on, McCar- or sold on uh, uh, Bo, Bo Nix. Right. And so he was sitting in the cut regardless because he felt as though that's the guy that he's going to get. Now, to me, the question becomes, were you sold on him because you knew that was the only pair of shoes on the wall that had your size, right? Like, I'm going to wait here. I'm going to go get my shoes. Everybody bought the other sneakers, bought them up, can't get them, you know, whatever. This is the one I know I I probably have the best opportunity to get, and that's what – I, 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 it's a dangerous word to say, but maybe it is. I, I feel like there might have been more than one team that had to do this as well. They settled. Did you settle on the fact that this is the best I was going to be able to do and hopefully I can get this quarterback at this point in time? And it, there's a strong possibility that I know I might sound crazy, but Minnesota had to settle for J.J. McCarthy. Like, that just is what it is. I think this is what this is detailing. I'm not even so sure. I'd love to know what they felt about or how they felt about Michael Penix. I was just going to ask that. 
Like how? Mm-hmm. Like where do you think? Did Atlanta like Michael Penix so much more than everybody else? Or if Michael Penix yeah. was there and sitting there with JJ McCarthy, would Minnesota have still taken McCarthy over Penix? Yeah, I mean, it, we don't know that answer, but definitively we know from the Charles Robinson piece that they had Penix's number two on their board. They had him as, as a top yeah. four prospect. Yep, they liked him that much. Yeah. They liked him that much where they could not pass him up. That was how it was explained. So, so yeah, I mean. So, basically, it was, guy. Caleb Williams was number one on everybody's board, and then after that it was like. Not everybody's Mitch board. Reviews. Not everybody's well, not, board not had Las Caleb Vegas. Williams number yeah. one. Yeah. Not Las Vegas. I, I mean, know, they obviously had a history. I, I just don't, you know, I don't know. Hold on a I second. Just, I'm just saying. <laughs> if you mean, everybody's everybody. Hold I don't on. know too much <laughs> anything about anything. I'm just saying. I, 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 find it, I find it hard to believe that if the Raiders were sitting there with the option that they still would have taken Jaden Daniels over Caleb Williams. Like... Um, You're not going to bait me. What do you mean? You're not going to bait me, Jonas. I just just know this. Ask Jay Glazer. Jay Glazer will tell you. Like, they they, – that's look, that's my go-to right now. (laughs) Ask Jay. (laughs) They they wanted Jaden Daniels. That's what it sounds like. (laughs) (laughs) That's what it sounds like. Sounds like they want Jaden. If you're J.J. McCarthy, do you see stuff like this and go, well, Damn. Like, like, what do you, or are you just like, no, no, listen, I've got Justin Jefferson. I've got Kevin O'Connell. I wanted to be here and I'm going to make this thing work because if this is, if, you know, if we're believing that this is accurate, although I would say the the only thing that doesn't make sense to me on the reporting of this, and it's not that, you know, Mark Maskey is, you know, gave out bad information. He's just reporting what he was told, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Mike Reese didn't give out bad information. This is just what he was told. Didn't Glazer say during the draft, because I was listening that the intent was never for Minnesota to give up that 23rd pick. Like, that that wasn't really part of the discussion for them, that they were willing to give up the 11th pick, but the 23rd pick they wanted to keep. They weren't looking to deal both picks. And that's right. why they were able to keep the 23rd, move up, and then take, you know, the the defensive end out of Alabama. I just wonder, that that's where I, I wonder how much of this is accurate. Because that was something I think Glazer said on the on the FSR draft broadcast that they weren't planning on giving up that pick because they still wanted to be able to make some moves in the first round outside of the quarterback. So, so what part of this report are you questioning the accuracy of? The fact that the 11 and the 23rd pick were included to move up and next year's first. That's a lot. I, I think in order to get Drake May, I think it was probably accurate. So Drake May was their one. JJ McCarthy Not their was one. Their two. I I think they they at that point they probably had him as their two, and but they wanted to move up to three to take him. Get, right. And you know what's yeah. a, you know what sucks about this whole thing? So Drake May was more coveted than JJ McCarthy, and he ended up in a worse spot. Yep. Like JJ McCarthy ends up in pretty much the best spot yes. out of all of them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> out of all of them, he was like who they settled for, and he ends Drake, up in Drake the best May spot. Drake May to New England, like what? The bloody hell is what this? What the what? <laughs> what the what? <laughs> like, just, what the what is this? That's why when people, when people talk about like, oh, well, so-and-so, uh, he's a bust. He's this and that. It's like, dude, how many more examples of situation dictates success a lot of times do you need before you go, yeah, man, like you can't, like, like Brock Purdy was Mr. Irrelevant and he ended up in a great situation it just, you know, so now you're J.J. McCarthy and you're sitting there going, all right, so I was, you know, fifth off the board and I ended up in possibly the best spot amongst all these guys. And so about away it? we go.